Hey Chris, what can I help you with today? I just gotta get a couple um, things of brush baggies and I gotta get a um, couple Wagner interfeed rollers because I gotta be doing some rolling some walls today. Just gotta grab those then I gotta get out of here. on the account? Yeah, I just throw it on the account. Cool, good to go. Cool, thank you very much, have a great day. You too. So we're out here today, uh, we're painting over wallpaper, which I really do not like doing, but uh, the customer's budget, this is what they wanted done. Uh, it's kind of like a vinyl wallpaper, and you definitely gotta prime it first. The customer didn't wanna pay the money to have it all removed. It'd be a pretty large expense to get it removed, re-skim coated and stuff. So we're priming it with a bonding primer and rolling it on using an interfeed roller. Give you a few tips and tricks using this interfeed roller. I'm always rolling along, squeezing my trigger when I'm going up. That way the paint doesn't waterfall out of the roller and spill all over the floor. So as I'm going up in an upward motion, I'm rolling. You can see how easy the interfeed roller is using it. Don't ever have to dip. So I'm just rolling it on. If you need to lay it out, you can go back and lay it out. But this is a bonding primer that I just want it on really thin because we're gonna be rolling our wallpaper afterwards with paint. Interfeed roller runs at extremely low pressure. I run it typically around 400 PSI. Gotta get just a thin coat on. If you put your bonding primer on too heavy, it will not act as a bonding primer because it'll dry too slow. This wallpaper, it has a, it's really grainy. Got kinda, it's very, um, like, kinda like a sandpaper, so the bonding primer will get down in there, bond really well. Once again, it's not the ideal condition, but it really comes down to customer budget, what they can afford, what their expectation is. It's always best to prime wallpaper with an oil-based primer, because your wallpaper does have a water-based paste underneath it. Um, this, Water can't penetrate this because it's a thick, thick vinyl industrial wallpaper that water won't penetrate and so it won't lift up the seams. Interfeed roller also, the roller covers, unfortunately they are not very good quality because the perforation process damages the rollers uh, quite a bit. So you definitely want to delint your rollers before you use them. We are painting the ceilings, so we're spraying the ceilings so I can go all the way up to the ceiling, get my primer all the way up to the top. So a few other tips and tricks when it comes to using an interfeed roller. Um, I've, in the past, left my rollers sitting, leaning on the wall like that, and the actual inner core is full of paint, and the paint will start to um, bleed out through your roller and start dripping out there actually pretty rapidly. So you wouldn't want to let your roller sit there for literally more than um, a minute or so. The other thing is, if you let it set there too long, it, and it starts to dry around the edges right there, if you left it set there for like 10 minutes, five or 10 minutes, this spot right there on the wall would actually show when you went back and rolled your wall. So the interfeed roller, I don't typically ever let it set up against the wall like that unless I'm only gonna do something real quick, come back, I'm gonna hit that spot. Otherwise, I'm gonna take a bucket and um, I usually have an empty bucket, take my interfeed roller and I'm gonna set it in the bucket just like this. This bucket has water in it so I don't want it to get down in the water. So I'm gonna set it and it's just gonna hang on the bucket. The paint will start to roll down and drip off there into the bucket and it won't drip on your floor or your drop cloth. So you got to, you know, every now and then spin your roller and allow it to distribute the paint, you know, inside the roller so it's not pooling down the bottom. Kind of a simple little handy tip that you would eventually learn if you've used it long enough over time.
I'll give you a quick tip when it comes to loading up your inner feed roller also. Typically it's going to be full of, your line's going to be full of water, antifreeze. I always keep auto antifreeze in my line to keep um, soft corrosion and freezing, stuff like that. But if you start loading it up with your roller cover on, you're going to get water or antifreeze coming through here. Your nap is going to get loaded with that and it's going to be saturated before your paint even comes through. And then you're going to have absolutely a mess on your wall with watered down paint. So take off your roller cover, load this thing up, make sure it's um, all full of just paint and no water. Then put your roller cover on and start loading up your roller cover in one spot. Loading, I'll just take one spot and start squeezing the trigger and loading up my roller cover in that one spot. Once it's fully loaded, then I'll start rolling my wall. So can the Interfeed roller work with any airless sprayer? It absolutely can. Any airless sprayer with your own airless gun. You can attach your own airless gun sprayer right to the Interfeed extension pole and head. You can buy just the head itself if you already have an extension pole, or you can buy the full setup, which is an inline gun, heavy duty extension pole, and their Interfeed roller head. I don't like using a regular spray gun because you're actually rolling and squeezing the trigger like this instead of you know more natural like an extension pull and rolling so I definitely like an inline gun whole setup is only like 350 bucks for the whole setup the head itself if you just want the head is somewhere around like 80 bucks but a must-have tool it's gonna make you a ton of money